Just me, no, I don't want to sort of catch you, to like catch you off guard, but... I'm never off guard. It's, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the book. As okay, such. what's it about? So I'm doing a documentary on... that You've probably heard that they've started testing drugs at festivals. Yeah, yeah, I know about that. And they've now started uh, selling them... Okay, who are you doing this for? For my degree. So for? For my degree. Okay, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, cool. Great. Yeah. So... Introduce yeah, yeah, introduction. Oh yeah, do you mind introducing yourself? I wouldn't mind at all. My name is Peter Hitchens. I am a columnist for the Mail on Sunday. Uh, I'm an author of several books, including on the subject we're about to be discussing, The War We Never Fought, about the non-existent war on drugs and the British establishment's surrender to drugs over the past 40 years. Non-existent war on drugs? Non-existent war on drugs, yes. Hence, hence it's the clues in the name, The War We Never Fought. That's why I wrote the book, because there are people like you who think there is such a thing going on. It's a fantasy, isn't it, for? And why do you say that there's no such because thing? Because there isn't one. And, and my book, if you obtain it and read it, will demonstrate to you in detail how and why and exactly where there isn't one. Okay. The war on drugs is a fantasy invented by a propagandist. There is no such thing. Okay. And that, how would you propose to, to start... I don't want a war on drugs. I simply want the the laws of this country to be enforced, which they're not and haven't been really since 1973. So is, is there not an argument for sort of personal freedom and uh, having the right to... Of course there's an argument for personal freedom, but, but personal freedom does not include the freedom to, to damage other people. And one of the principal effects of drug taking, particularly marijuana, the most heavily promoted and publicized drug of our time, is that it destroys the mental health of its users. The correlation in this is now so persuasive it's almost impossible to dismiss. And if you happen to be uh, the family of somebody who destroys his or her mental health, then you are punished for the rest of your life. The other thing which, of course, happens to people who destroy their mental health is that they become unproductive citizens who can't support themselves and have to spend a lot of time in locked wards and hospitals, uh, unable to work and provide for themselves. So they punish every single taxpayer who has to, has to pay for their upkeep for the rest of their lives. So it's not a victimless crime. But it would be a victimless crime if you lived on a desert island and nobody loved you. Uh, under those circumstances, smoking marijuana would be a victimless crime. You'd only be destroying yourself. Okay. But very few people live on desert islands. And the, quite a lot of people, surprising number of people, uh, are loved by others, uh, despite all the, uh, all, all the obvious reasons why they might not be. They are. So uh, it is the punishment which the drug abuser inflicts uh, on, his, on, on his family, usually and on society, which means that it's not a victimless crime, so and it's not just a matter think, of freedom. Do you think there's any uh, value in sort of a pragmatic approach that realistically people at music festivals are going to use drugs? Well, if they're going to use drugs, then realistically they should expect to be arrested and prosecuted for breaking the law. And the police should arrest, and, arrest them and the Crown Prosecution Service should prosecute them. If you break the law, that's what happens. If I, if I reached across the table and punched you on the nose in front of a camera, uh, you could call the police and have me prosecuted because I would have broken the law. So why shouldn't the same apply for someone who, 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 who buys a, a drug which it is a serious crime to possess? Do you know what this, the, the maximum sentence is for possession of cannabis? Five years? Five years in prison, exactly. Well, that's a major offence on the books. You should be arrested for it and charged if, you, if the evidence suggests that you've been doing it. And if you're found guilty, then on a first offence, you should be cautioned. On a second offence, you should go to prison. Why not? Well, well, it's, dang well, it's a dangerous, damaging thing. Giving way to it, and especially the, the authorities sitting around saying, oh, yes, everybody will do it. Well, if, if, the, if the authorities say everybody will do it, then everybody will. Increasingly, the authorities say, well, everybody will burgle your house, too, because they don't bother with that either. And you won't like that when your house is burgled. But what about anabolic steroids? How what about anabolic they're, steroids? They're not... They're not uh it's not a crime to, to have them in your possession, but supplying them is... Well, I, 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 I'm not a, a terrific expert on anabolic steroids, though I do know that their use is increasingly connected with both with terrorist actions and with crime. And for instance, the uh, Anders Breivik, you probably don't know this, the, uh, the mass murderer in Norway was on steroids. Uh, Omar Martin, the mass murderer in the recent Florida um, Orlando uh, mass killing, was on steroids. Uh, the the Ral Moat, who went berserk in the northeast of England, blinded a policeman and shot large numbers of people, was on steroids. All the London Bridge uh, terrorist killers were on steroids, and the Westminster mass killer Massoud was on steroids as well. So it is a major problem, and I would certainly like uh, something to be done about it. But my main concern is that the, the existing law should be enforced.
rather than to yeah. have new laws introduced. The dangers of steroids certainly need to be more loudly stated. But it's not the same issue that I'm concerned about, which is yeah. the issue of particularly of marijuana, uh, which is being falsely portrayed by a very, very slick and well-financed lobby as a safe drug when it's not, and whose legali legalization is being pursued by the same lobby. Well, the, 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 the Volfas are, are one of the uh, of one of the organisations which does indeed lobby for marijuana liberalisation. Yes, okay. but there are many, many others, um, and, do, and do they, they tend to be quite well financed as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think that in the next five to ten years it will be re recreationally legal? Not if I can help it. <laughs> And I think it's, it's, it's very much it's in the balance. I think the, the race by the legalizers to get it legalized, and they know that once it's legalized, it will be irreversible, because once you've legalized the drug, it's almost impossible to delegalize it again. Uh, the race between them and between the, the huge and, and growing pile of evidence that there is a strong correlation between marijuana use and mental illness uh, is a very interesting race to watch. And we will see uh, which uh, whether common sense and compassion and wisdom win, or whether commercial greed win. At the moment, commercial greed has its nose ahead, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will win. Have you had any personal experience with marijuana? Yep. Did you care to go into it? Or no, well, I mean, I, I very, very stupidly uh, dabbled with it in, in, in my teens. Yeah. It was one of the stupidest things I ever did in my life. I greatly regret it. Uh, I wish I hadn't done it. Yeah. What did you find with the effects that you didn't like? <coughs> uh, did I say anything about that? No. No, I didn't. I just, I, 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 I didn't. It didn't really have very much effect on me at all. I'm not a smoker, so it was not. Okay. Um, it was not. Uh, it, it, it had very little effect on me. But I didn't. It was just a stupid piece of bravado, which I, as I say, I regret. Yeah. Um. Great. That's it, really. So you haven't even asked me about drug testing at festivals. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, <coughs> well, it's your okay. interview, but I mean, if, since that's what you're asking no, me no, about, no, it would no, make no, sense no, to no, ask no, a question no. about it. <laughs> um, so, you're, you're against a, a realistic, pragmatic approach. To no, I'm not against a realistic, pragmatic approach. I'm, I'm, I'm against. So people can take responsibility no, I'm, for I'm, what they actually. I'm against people. Body. I'm against people in authority undermining the law which they're paid to uphold. The police are sworn to become a police officer. You swear an oath to uphold the law without fear or favour. And that means upholding it. It does not mean compromising it and saying, this law I can't be bothered to enforce, or this law I will look the other way about. All the law, you have to enforce it. That's your job. And anybody else in society governed by law who undermines the, the, the law of the land is effectively betraying uh, their own society and, and betraying civilization. No, if you, if, you, if you want openly to campaign for the legalization of marijuana, then say so. And then your your name could be added to the list of shame, which we will be studying when the truth is finally established yeah. about the, the the dangers of this drug and the stupid selfish greed of those who sought to legalize it. Uh, on the other, but do not pretend that there is any that you increase the safety or the security of anybody by making it easier to sell drugs at festivals, which is what uh, this testing does. Or, uh, or, or making the, the whole idea of, of taking illegal drugs more acceptable. What you do, well, what you do when you do safer, that, well, not it's not safer. It's, it's not safe. It's not safe. It's not safe. What it is, rather than yeah, and it's always dangerous. Some sort of, uh, it's a poison. It's a poison. It's always dangerous. There's, there is no safe way of taking mind-altering drugs. But By their nature, there is no there, more, more safe. No, there is no, taking something. There is there is no safe way, and they are illegal. So to promote the taking of them, or to suggest that the taking of an illegal, unsafe drug is in any way safer, is a wicked act. If the person who you persuade to buy and take a drug by doing this then develops lifelong mental illness, that's on your conscience. Yeah. Okay, well, I wouldn't, well, want, to I wouldn't want to have that on my conscience if they die, myself. If they die from I'm not talking about dying. rat poison or something like that, which is in the drugs which they would have found out had they tested them. No, the simple, the simple, rule, the, the simple rule with illegal drugs is they're illegal. Don't buy them, don't take them. Cool. That's what the law is for. It's to warn you. It's the, that's, that's what the purpose of the law is, is to warn people away from doing stupid, irresponsible things, uh, which will, damage, them, which will damage themselves and ruin the lives of their family. Okay. Amazing. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.